What's up everyone and welcome back to DIY W Yourself. In this video we're going to be making some cornhole boards. We had a little beach weekend trip planned so we thought it would be a good idea to have some boards for ourselves. In this little clip here you can see us just testing them out and me absolutely getting whooped by my brother. And I guess building doesn't help you play the game that's for sure. But we had a lot of fun and I highly suggest you making yourself a set uh, for either backyard games or hopefully tailgate season around the corner. These are very portable and convenient to carry with the rope handles and we cut out a lot of the weight by using 1x3s for the legs and frames. Well, Alright, let's get going on this build. So here's some of the materials we're going to use for that. Two 2x4 two foot sections of 3 quarter inch plywood. Four uh, 1x3 by 8 foot long pieces of pine, uh, some polyacrylic, it's just a water-based clear coat, four carriage bolts uh, with uh, nuts and washers, uh, two washers for each carriage bolt, so eight total washers and a approximate four foot uh, piece of rope. And I'll leave a cut list down in the description for anyone who may be interested. But for this part, we're just uh, using the cross-cut sled to uh, cut the frames to length. And the frame is going to be recessed three quarters of an inch or the width of the board. So the vertical pieces are going to be cut at 46 and a half inches and the horizontal pieces are going to be cut at 21 inches. Let's get going. We're going to do the, uh, attach the frames to each other by pocket holes. And you don't have to use pocket holes. You could always just screw into the ends of the board. Uh, for this, we're just checking the depth. Three quarters of an inch is the width of the board. So setting all the stops to that. And all the horizontal pieces are going to be getting pocket holes on the ends because that's going to attach the frames. And then the tops are going to be attached also by pocket holes, so they're going to be spaced out pretty evenly. And I usually like to mark all the pocket holes out where the pocket holes are going to go out first, just so you don't accidentally screw one the wrong way. And one thing I do, I constantly check the depth of the bit just in case it slides because that does not make for a fun project if it gets too deep. Ask me how I know. So for the spacing of the pocket holes, I like to go about three to four inches from the ends and then six to eight inches uh, spaced evenly throughout the rest of the way. So here we're going to assemble the frames and we're going to put in glue on the ends, clamping it down so it doesn't move because when you're doing pocket holes, there's a good chance the board's going to shift on you and once it's in, it's in. And if you're using pocket holes, definitely do not forget to lower your chuck setting because you don't want to screw through the board. And the beautiful thing about uh, the recessed frame is that you don't have to make this absolutely perfectly square. Uh, it kind of can be hidden underneath the top, but we're going to check close. And now for everybody's favorite part is the six inch hole. Uh, the center of the hole is located nine inches from the top and 12 inches from the edge or just the middle of the board left to right. Depending on how you cut down your plywood tops, you're going to lose some material to the saw curve. So you're not going to be exactly 48 inches by 24 inches. And to cut the hole, we're going to be using a router. And to cut a perfect circle, we're going to be using a circle cutting jig that we're assembling right now. And in the router, we're going to be using a straight bit. For each hole, we're going to make multiple passes, just taking a little bit of material out at each time. And it'll be really nice right now to manage all these wires and vacuum hose to uh, to own a sky hook. If you know, you know. And 
And after a few quarter inch passes, uh, we are through. And after you cut the holes, we're going to go ahead and give the board a quarter inch round over all along the edges, top and bottom, and the center of the circle. But one thing, if you're videoing, you got to make sure. Don't bump the balancing camera. All right, so let's try this again. Uh, this time we're doing a little bit different angle here. And uh, we're just giving the quarter inch round over just to kind of soften those edges. And it'll kind of help the bags a little bit from getting torn. Okay, same kind of deal here. Quarter inch round over just using the router table, a little homemade router table instead. And we're just doing this to the bottom that's gonna be on the ground not to the part that's going to be attached to the top. And once again, this is just to soften the edges, just to break away those sharp corners, so just a little bit nicer to the touch. Okay, here's a little more assembly. We're going to go ahead and spread this glue along the frame to help secure it to the tops. To help align the frames onto the top, we're going to use some of those scraps from earlier just to kind of get the spacing just right. It gives the boards a nice look to have the tops hang over three quarters of an inch all the way around. And I find the easiest way just to hold everything in the place is the four clamps in the corners. And then from there, you can put in your pocket screws. And once again, just lower the chuck setting on your drill. All pocket screws used in this build are inch and a quarter in length. And now to mark the location for the carriage bolts, we're going to go an inch and a quarter from the bottom and an inch and a quarter from the front. Then clamp a backer board to the frame and that way we don't get any tear out after we drill the hole. And from our last piece of 8 foot board we're going to go ahead and cut out our legs. Each leg right now is going to be cut a little bit long so we're going to make each of them 13 and a half inches. Using the previously drilled holes through the frames, we're going to drill through the legs using a backer piece so we don't get tear out. Using a two and a half inch coupling, we're going to use a jigsaw to cut along that line. And then once the corners are removed, we can go ahead and sand it down and kind of smooth it out a little bit. The top of the board has to be 12 inches from the ground. So a bucket was used to get to that exact height and the angle of each leg is going to be marked independently from each other. And then we cut each leg along that line. Each of the legs were then rounded over at the router table along with the stretchers you see here. The length of the stretchers were cut off camera at about 19 and a half inches and then from there snuck up on the cut to account for the washers on each side of the legs. From there, the legs were installed again using carriage bolt, washer, then the leg, then the washer, and then the nut. To install the stretcher, we're going to be using pocket holes and glue. Using a piece of scrap to match the location of the stretcher on each leg. And once in the location of your liking, go ahead and install the screws. Using a pencil, we're going to lightly mark all over the board. This would be a guideline so we don't sand too much in one area. And this will be sanded with 220 grit sandpaper. Since we're using a water-based finish, we're gonna go ahead and saturate the board really well, also wiping off all that excess dust from the sanding, and then allow the board to completely dry. What this does is it raises the grain of the wood and gives us a much smoother finish once we sand again with 220. 
To stain the board, we're using a gel stain, and this color is called Weathered Gray by Verithane. Applying coats to the bottom and to the top with old rags, and then using a clean rag to wipe off the excess. This particular stain calls for a 24 hour dry time before any finish is applied to it. So once we were completely done with the stain, we just let it sit. To install the rope handles, we first found the balancing point of the cornhole boards, which is going to be more towards the leg side, and then drilled half inch holes on each side of that balancing point, so the rope's going to span across six inches. Here we're cutting the rope in half to create about two 23 to 24 inch sections for each board. And I like to use tape along the cut to keep the rope from unraveling and fraying, and then you can always come back later with a lighter to melt the ends. And the diameter of this rope is 3 eighths of an inch, which is a little bit smaller than the half inch holes we drilled earlier. Each end was tied with a figure eight knot to secure the rope. Now we're going to apply the polycrylic with a 3 inch foam brush. This dries very quickly so we're doing our best to just cover all the surface. Each subsequent coat can be applied after 2 hours. Once you have complete coverage, you can go ahead and take your brush and lightly wipe in the same direction as the wood grain to smooth everything out. After two coats, we're going to sand down the wood fibers that have raised up from the polycrylic. Using 320 grit sandpaper, we're lightly covering the whole board in the same direction as the wood grain. Pass your hand across the top of the board to look for any spots that may need extra attention. After lightly sanding the edges, use a tack cloth to wipe away the loose particles. Now we're going to go ahead and install a decal to the cornhole board. We used a few different reference points to make sure the decal is consistent on both boards. Taping down one side and slowly applying the sticky side of the decal. Start in the center of the decal and then apply pressure to the outside to make sure there's no bubbles. Then slowly remove the sticky paper so just the decal remains. Then you can use the original contact paper to reinforce the decal on the board. After the decal was applied, another six or seven coats of polycrylic were brushed on. After about three or four coats, the transition from board to decal feel pretty seamless to the touch. My grandpa was a maker, and this decal is a design that he would engrave on all of his projects and builds. He called it his gargoyle, and it was his signature that he left everywhere. It has a lot of meaning to my family and me. Another reminder that there's a little bit of him in me. Pretty cool. We hope you enjoyed this video and maybe inspired you to build a cornhole set for yourself. And if you did, like this video and subscribe to our channel for more projects and builds to come.